Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to talk about some of the downside of using the server side rendered props and static props and what people generally do the mistake while writing these functions. Okay, so first we will take a look on the build output. You can see that these all different files we are getting. Uh, dot means these files are statically rendered and the lambda means this is a server side rendered. Okay, that means it might be using get initial props, get static props or uh, get server side props. Okay, so now we already know that these different methods get server side props means on every request server will compute or server will fetch the data and will send it right. But we also talked about get static props and get static paths right. Those are different than this because for those methods the data is being fetched at the build time only so that uh, the final HTML can be sent and can be cached so that it behaves differently than get server side props. Okay. Now what we will do is we'll create our one single piece which is blog.js. Okay, it will become route and we will just use some code snippet to enter the HTML and we'll see how it behaves in our templates builds. Okay, now if I build it. So it's just a table. So it should be statically rendered. A blog route will get added in the production build. And we can see uh, it will take some time. Here we can see this blog is also added, but this is also statically rendered. You can see dot means automatically generated as a static HTML plus JSON. But what if we are actually passing this data dynamically. I will just use this snippet now, which is doing nothing but uh, we have some kind of an array. Okay, the only difference here is export cons export default users. I will explain this. Okay, this example and the previous example, the only difference is now we have the users array somewhere. I mean we are actually feeding the data to the HTML template and now if we try to see the build do we see any difference because currently the blog is taking okay it's in bytes okay now if I just do npm run build and we'll wait for some time once this is done now what we are trying to achieve is what all different possibilities when you are having data in just an array iterating using dot map or when you are actually getting the data maybe through axios call you are not using these methods get server side props get initial props then what will happen to your bundle size so blog is 429 bytes uh, which is uh, fine for now now what we are doing is uh, when you are doing a next build what is happening with this or blog.js it is taking 429 bytes which is still fine now consider that you started writing uh, the Axios block and started writing uh, the code in that. So it can be a simple like you have written Axios fetch call in your state. So in this example where we have just a const users and we are iterating onto these users in our HTML. This is fine when you are running npm run build we are just getting uh, the the smaller size okay and this is a statically rendered piece now what we are going to do is we are going to just uh, do some changes like we are using axios for making a call okay so i have written some snippet of the code we will just go through that what we are doing we are using use effect use, use state to just uh, make an api call get the data and set the data in the, in the hooks like set users otherwise set error and set loading so these three different states we have added. So once we have the data, we should be able to load that in the HTML template. So this is the sections and these are our users. Okay. So in body what we are doing is we are just running users.map and for every user, we are actually rendering it in a row, user and key. So if we just see in the row, what we are saying is you are just making all these columns. Columns will have 
user dot username let's say we have a username only we'll keep, we can add more key equal to index which we have added okay now if we try to build it so what we are doing is from the previous example we just edit these hooks use effect will get triggered it will do the fetch data fetch data is a sync call okay and it will set the users and now we are rendering the users list of users and we are displaying it now if i try to run this uh, with npm run build and see what changes we have done i hope we have saved it we are returning this content all looks fine we have also installed axios to run this now if you just try to see this chunk of blog now it has increased to you can say 12 folds because now the size is 6.25 kb okay this is what i was highlighting if you are misusing these things and you are not using these uh, specific methods which has been provided like get server side props now if you just try to use the method which we already have now if you just try to render this blog page then you will see an API call is being made while loading the page because fetch data is happening at the runtime when the component is getting rendered it is making this JSON placeholder call data is being received and then you are able to see the data here you can just do some kind of a checks like user is there there are different states we are having right uh, you can just set something if error is there then what you can say is if error is there then some error occurred you can wrap this inside a spin tag okay and here you can just do this once you have only user array okay now on top of that uh, let's try to simplify this and in this example we are not going to use this axios.get data we'll do it but in different way okay we will use uh, our own method which is export const so we'll write export const get server side props we can just copy this from here so we'll use this helper method and it is also a sync and what it is doing it is calling one another method which is fetch data const data which is await fetch data let's create this method fetch data and what we are returning from here is uh, props with data which need to be published on the UI now we'll just remove this async call and we'll move it to the fetch data okay it's already a function but we'll just move it outside so that things are good we don't need these hooks and these huge state and all we'll just create a method here fetch data which is async await again await the same data and what we are doing is we are just returning the response so in this object what we are doing is okay let's go there and here we are returning an object in this object we are saying error is false and users is response dot data otherwise error is true So if we are getting catch block okay error is true and response to data is null in this particular case okay so this we have returned the this fetch data call now fetch data call is being made to this get server side props okay and we are able to see the props data now props data is injected so we can actually pass this in our component which is users comma error if any error has occurred and users we can simply map 
if user is there we can iterate on to it if error is there some error has occurred right so this is just a same way of uh, doing it we don't need these hooks now same way of doing it with the help of get server side props now if i just try to build it if everything is fine and we'll check the size now what is the size of the same data So you can see it's magic right blog is now revert back to the food 22 bytes right similarly there is another methods like uh, we can use get static props get initial props all these methods get static props what it will do is it will fetch the data at the build time only okay if, if I use get static props and we'll see it should be get static props okay so we have fixed that error it was due to we were not returning uh, from here and now we can see uh, now we can see that console.log data we can remove it now props.data and we can check the bundle size which we are getting in the build so this is the blog and you can see dot means automatically generated as a static html plus json because we are using get static props and you can see it is uh, for 22 bytes and even if you try to see the blog html in the next build uh, pages blog html right it should have this html content somewhere right you can see this email template and all these properties are there so this is the props you are passing it's just a json object all right so this is what get static props is doing to our component Okay, now we got the understanding what is get static props, get server side rendered props. And in this particular time when you are using, using get static props, what do we see? This full circle, right? Full circle means automatically generated as a HTML plus JSON because it is using get static props. Okay, it is not uh, the server side, it is not having lambda because we are not using get initial props and get server side props okay so it, it depends on the use case when i say like like you have same kind of a data then and you want that data available at the build time then you can use get static props this is uh, helpful while caching and uh, it also makes pays more seo optimized get static props and get uh, server side props will mainly use to fetch the data from external source while get initial props can focus on preparing some props to be populated before page is getting rendered okay so these are the different methods i hope uh, this video is helpful to understand how uh, how to use uh, what all different things to use while you want to fetch the data externally from external data source which might be changing or which might be a constant json